Hi, I'm Carlton Sharp, and I want to thank you for tuning in to this live broadcast by way of live stream, Roku, or Facebook Live. You make our services so special each time you join us, and we hope that today's message will minister to your hearts. Our desire is that you enjoy the worship experience, the fellowship, and the ministry of the Word that will feed your faith and grow your spirit. So without further ado, get your Bible ready, and let's tune in to this live service already in progress.
sweet to God. You're still worthy, God. You're still worthy.
mighty for us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. His record cannot be broken. Come on, he's undefeated tonight. Somebody know him? Come on, let's celebrate Jesus on tonight. Come on, we proclaim hallelujah tonight. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of our worship. You're worthy of our praise. Come on. Come on, Jesus. We worship you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. We're going to sing this all together tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift it up. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. You have won the victory. Come on, tell him what he's done. Tell him what he's done tonight. Come on, we lift you high. Come on, we sing hallelujah. 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 You And we worship you tonight, Jesus. You are. You are the Come on. And we know that you're seated in majesty, seated. Seated in majesty. Oh, you are the risen king. Hallelujah. By his nail, his hands, we're free. Anybody know that testimony? By his blood, that red blood washes us. We once clean. Hallelujah. Now we have. Now we have the victory. And I like this part right here. And the power of sin. And the power of sin is broken. It's broken in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And we're going to proclaim this right here. Listen. Our God is risen. He's alive. He is alive. Come on, tell him what he did. He won the victory. He reigns. He reigns on high. Come on, proclaim it, proclaim it. Our God Come on, make this your heart declaration tonight. He is alive. We're so grateful that you're alive tonight. You are the Come on, he reigns. He reigns on high. He reigns on Come on, our God is risen. Our God is risen. Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Come on, chill. 
social media tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight. Whether you're watching by way of live stream, Roku, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Amazon TV, Google TV. Hey, listen, we want to welcome you to our service tonight. Hey, listen, all the other names will fade away until there's only him. Jesus, amen. Only Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, listen, we'd like to extend the opportunity for us to pray with you and pray for you. So if you need prayer tonight, there's several ways whereby you can get your prayer request to us. If you're watching by way of live stream, there's a box right there on your screen. If you just type in your prayer request, send it to us. If you're watching by way of Facebook Live, you can message us your prayer request. If you want to send it by email, you can send it to prayer ministry at FCCC-BMT.org. But if you're technology savvy, pull out your cell phone and text PR to 54244. Again, that's PR to 54244. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And then uh, uh, we want to pray with you and pray for you. Amen. So listen, at any time throughout the broadcast, you can email us, text us, message us, uh, Facebook message us. Listen, we'll get it and we'll begin to pray with you and pray for you. Amen. We feel that you don't have to face your life situation all alone when you have people like us willing to pray with you and pray for you. A amen. So at any time, just email us, text us, message us. We'll get it and we'll begin to pray with you and pray for you. Amen. Now listen, do me a favor. Call a friend, text a friend, email a friend, or share this message with ones that you love so they can be blessed by the word of God tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 Hey, just a couple things real quick. Uh, first of all, I want to, over the last week, I guess since last Thursday, we've been dealing with uh, the tropical storm Amelda. Amen. And so uh, we've been helping the community out and doing whatever we can to, to be a blessing to them. And so, but I really want to thank and applaud uh, Felicia Young and her staff at Antioch Baptist Church, amen. They're doing such a wonderful job feeding the community. Uh, it's gonna be over 30,000 meals that will be fed this week, amen. And so uh, uh, tomorrow will be the last day of feeding from 10 o'clock to one o'clock. And I just want to applaud them. I, look, it is an undertaking to be able to feed 30,000 meals in just a few days, amen. And so, uh, so if you're available tomorrow from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, come on out and uh, help plate some food, amen, so we can share with the community uh, on, on tomorrow, amen. Praise God, amen. Now also, uh, uh, how it, I, know, I know the Finette uh, estates got hit. Anybody else get hit hard from the storm? Well, where are you at, Chanel? So, so your roof damage, amen. Now there are going to be some volunteers coming in. Uh, I, look, they brought the they brought all of the the tools yesterday. Uh, now we're waiting on the volunteers to come in town, and as soon as they get in town, we're gonna we're gonna come and help those who have been hit hard, amen. By by the by tropical storm Imelda, praise God, amen. Well, listen, I want to go to the video department now and and do our video announcement for tonight. Praise the Lord, amen. As soon as they get it, hallelujah, amen. They're doing double, triple duty, amen. Amen. Praise.
praise the Lord. Formed on when you can't understand God and impatience overwhelms you. And Mary, as she makes known for when God asks you to do something outside your comfort zone, now what? So ladies, come be inspired as we walk through this book study every second and fourth Sunday in the bookstore right here at Faith Christian Center Church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Echo. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, also mark your calendar uh, for Saturday, October the 5th. Uh, Lady Gwen will have our Thrive Conference. Amen. Give, give y'all give a big hand for that. Amen. 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 Lady Gwen has some awesome speakers that's going to come to talk to us about uh, your spiritual needs, your natural needs, uh, as far as health is concerned, and then also your entrepreneur needs. Amen. Those who are entrepreneurs, uh, Lady Gwen's going to have some dynamic speakers coming in on October the 5th, Saturday, October the 5th, for the Thrive 19 Conference from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, with that being said, guess what? It's offering time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My brothers will come now and pass in our envelopes. Amen. As you know, we have several boxes where we distribute our funds. There's a box for our tithe. We don't have a God robber among us. Amen. Then there's a box for our pastor's compensation fund. Gwen and I are not on a salary. We believe that God supplies our needs as we sow the word into your hearts. Then there's a box for our television ministry. Building fund is the mission. We ask that each person will sow a seed into those ministries. Then our debt reduction. We ask that each person will sow a seed of $25 a week in our debt reduction. And then finally, those of us who uh, uh, want to give our $19 celebration seed can do that in the other box. Amen. Again, that's our tithes, our pastors, compensation fund, television ministry, building fund, missions, debt reduction, and our celebration seed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, listen, those of you who are watching by way of all of our social media, you also can give tonight. If you're watching by way of live stream, there's a, do there's a give button right there on the top of your screen. If you just click that donate button and follow the simple instructions, you can sow your seed. Those who are watching by way of Facebook Live, there's a pin on your screen. Just click the pin. Again, some information will pop up, and you can sow your seed. But if you're technology savvy, pull out your cell phone and text FCCC Give, FCCC Give, all one word, to 54244. Or if you're on our new mobile app, you can just click the mobile app on the Give, give Now, and uh, also some information will pop up and you can sow your seed. This is good ground to sow into, and as you sow, you can have an expectation for God to return it back to you. Good measure, press down, shake together, and run it over what God calls men to give it to your bosom. So let me thank you in advance for what you do to advance the kingdom of God here in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give me a few moments to fill out your envelopes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, you ready to give? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, how would you thank you, God, for this opportunity to give to you that which you blessed us with? And Father, we thank you for every tither in the house, and we declare the windows of heaven blessing upon our lives. And Father, we believe that you give us wisdom and insight into financial matters as a result of our giving. Then, Father, those who give toward the television ministry, building fund, and the missions, Father, your word declares that when we give for the support of the ministry, that you shall return unto us the maximum return. Then, Father, those of us who choose to eliminate kingdom debt, we thank you, Father, that you eliminate our personal debt, and that we live a debt-free life willing to obey you in everything that we do. Then, finally, Father, those of us who, who, who keep our vow and give toward the celebration seed, Father, we thank you, Father, that your word declares that as we keep our vow, that we could decree a thing, that things shall be established unto us, and the light of your favor shall shine upon our path. And so, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for increase and abundance, what you promise in your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Our brothers, come now and receive our offering.
simply hold up your envelope and one of our brothers will come by and receive it. If you missed, just simply hold up your envelope and one of our brothers will come by and receive it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our young people can be dismissed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you ready for the word? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, how we do thank you, God, for this time of fellowship with people of like precious faith. Father, we thank you that your word flows freely in this place, unhindered and unchecked by any force. Father, we thank you that your word is not void of power and that you confirm your word with signs following. Father, we thank you that Jesus Christ is our high priest and that he ever liveth to make intercessions for us. Now, Father, thank you that my body is strong, my mind is alert, and my lips are anointed, that I will clearly articulate the words such that every spiritual need is met. Now, Father, I covenant in advance to give you all the praise, all the glory, all the adoration for what shall be revealed this night. And all who agree with that prayer said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter number 13. Praise the Lord. Amen. Luke chapter number 13. Amen. Luke chapter 13. Well, let's hold up our Bibles, make our confession of faith, hold them up nice and high, and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer and not just a hearer. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never ever be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Before I begin, uh, Sister Pauline told me that she talked to Sister Michelle today, and she said she was doing well. Praise the Lord. She's home. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And she is recovering. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Now, in the days to come, I might need to ask some of you to come and uh, go and sit with her for a little bit. Amen. To give her mother a break. So uh, when I call you, amen, I text you. I'm a text, you know, I'm a text everybody at the same time. And then uh, we'll get some times where we can go over there and, and just sit with her and uh, give her mom a break. Amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Let's begin at verse number 10. Luke chapter 13, verse number 10. Look what it says. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And was bowed and together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. And the Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall, and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all, for all the glorious things that were done by him. Tonight, I want to begin a new series of lessons, a new series of lessons entitled, Faith for Your Healing. Amen? Faith for Your Healing. <clears throat> now, go over to Ezekiel chapter, Ezekiel chapter 33, Ezekiel chapter number 33. Over the past several weeks... The Spirit of God has been speaking to me about sharing this series of lessons with you. Amen. <clears throat> because there is a spiritual attack that's happening right now. And as a watchman for your soul, God told me to come to you and to share these things with you so that you can have faith for your healing. Amen. And uh, when I hear the voice of God, you know, he told me to interrupt the series of lessons that I was teaching in order to teach you this. So that you can have faith. Amen. In Ezekiel chapter 33, let's begin at verse number one. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse number one. It says, and again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people 
and say unto them, when I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever hear the sound of the trumpet and take it not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say un unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, I need you to share with the people of God that there is an attack by the devil, amen, concerning health and healing, amen. And uh, it is our respons my responsibility for this body of believers and for those who are watching who, who say, I'm their, I'm, their, I'm their television pastor. Amen. Well, then I want to warn you of the impending danger that the devil is trying to kill, steal, and to destroy you. Amen. Now, go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Amen. Luke chapter 22. Look at verse number 31. Luke chapter 22, verse number 31. Luke chapter 22, verse number 31. Look what he says. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Amen. Now, over the past, uh, over the past, what it, it's been nine months, over the past nine months, Lady Gwen has been attacked. Uh, in her body by the enemy. And so I'm not only teaching this to you, but I'm also as a as a as a point of 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 uh, interest that we we went through this. Amen. And, and we had to we had to use our faith for her healing. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And, and God says that when you are converted, then you strengthen your brother. Amen. And so that's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm here to give you revelation on faith for your healing. But I'm also trying to demonstrate to you that we've already been through this. Yeah. Amen. And we have the answers to your healing based upon God's word. Because there's enough power in whatever God says to make whatever God says what? Come to pass in our lives. And so all we need to do is just get back into the word of God. But there have been many questions that have been asked that, concerning whether or not God wants to heal us. It's healing real. Amen. Amen. And, and, and is it? Available for every believer and not every other believer. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, what are the ways that we could be healed? So in this lesson series, that's what I'm going to talk about is healing for all. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And should every believer have a right to be healed? Watch this now and watch this. And, and what are the ways that we can be healed? Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, once we get this word, we have to mix our faith with it. Amen. Somebody say mix our faith. Amen. Now, here's the thing. God will not violate any person's will. Amen. He will not. But we can use our faith in order to receive our healing. Amen. Once we get the word, then we have to guard that word in our heart. Amen. Because the devil will try to abort God's plan for our lives if we don't guard it. Amen. Then we have to meditate on the word. Amen. Somebody say meditate on it. Meditate on the word day and night. And then we have to speak the word of God in our lives. Hallelujah. Now, there are four reasons why I want to suggest to you why people get sick. Four reasons. Number one, natural accidents. Amen. People get into an accident 
and it's, it's no fault of their own. We, we were uh, coming to church tonight, and we've seen a couple of accidents today. So you can get into an accident that's a natural accident and, and cause your, your health to be challenged. Amen? Then there could be satanic attacks. Satan can attack your body. Amen? That's why you have to have, have the revelation of the word of God so that you know how to handle the devil when he comes. Amen? The Bible, in our opening passage, the Bible says that Satan had bound this woman for 18 years. It wasn't God. It was the devil. Amen? Hallelujah. Then there could be the infirmity of the flesh. Hallelujah. That was a man born blind. That was an infirmity from his flesh. Amen? And, and, and the disciples asked the question, who sinned, this, this man or his parents? And Jesus said, nobody sinned. It was just the infirmity of his flesh. Amen? And then watch this now. Then it could be human error. We could be doing some things in our lives that cause sickness and disease to come upon us. Amen. I mean, you can't eat chitlins every day. <laughs> Pig's feet. You can't. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, we got there's some natural things that we have to do. Amen. Lord of God. All the pork chops and all that kind of look. I mean, I mean, what you say to support a macaroni? Don't say macaroni and cheese to support. Now, don't say that one. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So 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 there are some things that we have we have done that have caused us to to have some health challenges. Listen. The, the medical industry have said that one thing that we all should do is drink more water. Amen. And and some people, if they don't have a soda every day, a Coke, it, it seems as if something is wrong. Amen. And so it is the, the body has been designed by God to function and live a long time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now go to John chapter eight. But let's go to Acts chapter 10 first. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Look at verse number 38. Acts chapter 10. Verse number 38. Hallelujah. We have to ask the question, is sickness and disease from God? Amen. Did God put it on you? Amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse number 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Amen. Now, now I truly believe that it is not the will of God for you to be sick. Amen. It's not the will of God. Because if, if, if sickness was the will of God, then Jesus would have violated God's order. Amen. Because the Bible says everywhere that Jesus went, he healed those who were afflicted. Yeah. So if, if, if sickness and disease was from God, yeah. then Jesus violated his father's will. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And, and listen, if sickness and disease are from God, then we are violating the word of God if we try to get healed. Yeah. Amen. But I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to deal with it and we're going to walk through the scripture so that we can see for ourselves what is the will of God. Amen. Go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Now, I believe that the devil has lied to many of us when it comes down to our healing and says stupid stuff like God is trying to teach you something. Amen. God, God put it on you. Amen. Because he's trying to teach you something. Well, I can just read the word of God and God can teach me everything I need to know. Amen. He does not have to put sickness and disease on me. Amen. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe the devil told you that because you've done something wrong in your past that God is whipping you. Amen. He's punishing you for all the sin that you've done. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, then maybe the devil will tell you that God is trying to get you to trust him. <laughs> Amen. That's just a lie from the devil. John chapter 8. Look at verse number 44. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your fathers ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So the Bible says that whenever the devil speaks, he's speaking a lie, amen? Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, Keisha's 29 now. She's about to be 29. So, so I, this was 29 years ago. My mother, my mother passed away <clears throat> almost 30 years ago. 
And my mother was a young woman. She was 48 years old when she passed away. <clears throat> and uh, now I was, I was, I was in ministry, and, but I didn't know the word. And so because I didn't know the word, I, I really feel responsible that I, I, couldn't, I couldn't operate in the authority that God has given us. That believers can lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know? And so I believe that the devil snuffed my mother's life out early because of ignorance. Because we just didn't know. Because the devil said, you got to die something. Amen? And at 48, she shouldn't have died. No, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But, but, you know, it happens. Okay? But he lied. He said that... Healing was not for us today. He's the father of the lie. Amen. He, he said that God won't put no more on you than you can bear. Amen. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. See, because we don't know the scripture, nor the power of God, some people will accept cliches in church as if it's the truth of God's word. And I don't know about you, but I've heard it over and over and over again in church that God won't put no more on you than you can bear. And it was from a credible other that said it. Many pastors have, have, have walked in that lie thinking that it sounds good, but it don't line up with scripture. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Watch this now. Let's just see. Look at verse number 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 13. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you or allow you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to what? To bear it. It did not say that God put it on you. Yeah. Amen. He says that whenever you have a challenge, a test, or a trial, God is already providing you a way out of it. Amen. It's just that we need to know the way out. Amen. Now, I'm not limiting healing to just the physical aspects of our lives. Your toe hurt, a headache, whatever the case may be. I'm not limiting it to that. I'm also talking about your emotional healing. Amen. That you would have the peace of God. And even in this time right now that we're going through with this storm Imelda. I mean people are having a challenge with their emotional stability. I, I'm, I'm reading of believers. I'm reading of preachers who are having uh, uh, emotional difficulties because of this storm. Is it that we don't know the word? That, that we know that God has provided us the peace that we need right now in the midst of this storm? Amen. Even when Jesus was going through a storm and the disciples uh, uh, had an issue, they were they were having a challenge. They went and woke Jesus up and said, Jesus, tear us down, not that we perish. He got up and said, listen, you could do this, but I'm going to show you what to do. Peace be still. Amen. There is an emotional healing that we can have right now. I know people have lost some stuff. Amen. I'm not diminishing the fact that you may have lost some stuff, but there is a healing that God provides for us when it comes down to our emotional stability. Amen. And God wants us healed. Amen. But we just need to know what the word of God says. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, now, now watch this now. Go to uh, Mark chapter seven. I believe that tradition have caused many to die a premature death. Amen. With stuff like you got to die from something. Amen. I see Enoch was taken by, by God. Amen. I mean, I mean, Elijah was taken by God. Amen. So, so, I mean, if you got to die, nobody can find Moses' body. Amen. Just, hey, just walk into the, walk into the glory of God. Amen. Amen. But, but, but tradition have told us, society have told us, that this is in your family. Amen? For instance, the devil tried to tell me that because your mother died from hypertension, you're going to die. Amen? 
And I say, I curse that in the name of Jesus. Amen. I will not die before my time. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch this now. Mark chapter number seven. Look at verse number, number uh, six. Mark chapter seven. Verse number six. Watch this now. He answered and said unto them, well, hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the traditions of men as washing of pots and cups and many other such like things. And he said unto them, full well ye reject the commandment of God, that you, that you may keep your traditions. Amen. It's the traditions. Amen. That has caused us to, to, to miss the, the promise that God made to us. Amen. Now, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Now, again, <clears throat> I'm just walking through scripture to set the foundation so that we can get faith for our healing. Amen. Faith for our healing. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Look at verse number 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Verse number 17. Look what he says. Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before your time? Amen. You don't, listen, you don't have to accept the devil's lie that says that in your family nobody makes it to 70. No. You don't have to accept that lie. You don't have to accept the lie that the devil says, well, all your family have diabetes. Amen. So, so you're going to have diabetes. No, I'm going to eat right. And I'm going to drink a lot of water. Amen. Why? Because I'm not dying from diabetes. Amen. Hallelujah. See, see, even now, we, we are raising a generation who are processed food addicted. Amen. Because it's quick. It's quick for us. To just, after we leave church, go right there to McDonald's. Grab a burger, grab a fry. Look at all the fries that's on your console down inside. Praise the Lord. You can't, even, you can't even get them no more. I mean, they're all down in there. Process. Amen. And now, and now, now we, we're so contaminated in our bodies that, you know, we have opened the door for the devil to attack us. Amen. Mm. Not only processed foods, watch this now, your sweets, cakes and pies and, and malt shakes and amen. <laughs> hey, look, look, I'm, 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 I'm just as guilty as the rest of us, amen. And that was an ouch for me because I have said that, watch this now, that I cannot have dinner without something sweet at the end of it. Amen. And now your, your, your flesh have, have this craving that it desires to have something sweet all the time. Now, now society doesn't help us out, Mary Jane, watch this now, because they make what's healthy and good for us so doggone expensive. You go buy some, some grapes or some apples or some oranges, and it's $25. When you go to McDonald's, they got the $1.99 meal. So now we are programmed to go for process instead of what's good for us. Amen. Not only that, but watch this now. Many believers don't even do what they can when it comes down to exercising. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. It has been said that just walking a little bit will help you. Amen. It's the little things. You don't have to get a gym membership. Just go walk around your block. And while you're walking, why don't you witness for the Lord? Say, you know, the Lord is good today. Hey, neighbor, how you doing? The Lord is good today. Amen. What say, sister boy, pick up some litter. <laughs> First Timothy chapter four. Watch this now. First Timothy chapter four. Look at verse number eight. First Timothy chapter four, verse number eight. Look what he says. For bodily exercise profited what? Okay, so the little that it profits, let's get it. Amen? 
Now, now one of the one of the things that I I, I love, and I, I don't know if I'm going to do it this year, but one of the things that I love to do, Denise, is I like to officiate basketball. Oh, I love basketball. Oh my God, and and I, I love being out. I think that officiating is the best seat in the house. I mean, you right in the middle of the action, you know, and uh, and so that that has been my exercise for the last 10, 12 years. I mean, I I I, I mean. I get out there chasing. Now, they getting younger. I'm getting older. Amen. But I know that I need to have some type of exercise in order to keep this body functioning like God designed it to function. Amen. Amen. So, so you got to get some exercise. Somebody say exercise. And that's not going to the refrigerator and opening up the door. I exercise, Pastor. I, I got it done. That's not exercise. Amen. Mark chapter 6. Go to Mark chapter 6. Not only that. But if I'm not going to, if, if, if I'm going to make sure that this machine that God has designed call your body, then I must get proper rest. Amen. Proper rest. Amen. Now, now it's important that you rest this body and not only rest this body, but rest your mind because your body can be laying down, but your mind is still going. Amen. And that's why God has said in 1 Peter, cast all your care upon me because I care for you so that you can rest this mind. Ooh, Jesus. What did I tell you to go? Mark chapter 6. Look at verse number 30. Mark chapter 6. Let's begin at verse number 30. Look what he says here. Mark chapter 6, verse number 30. And the apostles gathered together, gathered themselves together unto Jesus. And told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he, and he said unto them, come ye yourselves apart before you come apart. Y'all get that? Come ye yourselves apart before you come apart. Amen. Into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship privately. Amen. So Jesus tells his disciples, you will come apart if you don't come apart. Yeah. Amen. Now, I have to admit, over this last week, I have, I, I have I've been testing the boundaries. Amen. Because of the need of the people. Amen. And uh, I've been burning both ends, trying to make sure that everything was good. Amen. But I understand that after tomorrow, I will get some rest. Amen. No, no, no. See, you got to understand that each one of us needs some time to relax and rest a while. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that's that's how we're going to be able to live a long life. Amen. Why do you think God made the day and the night? So he can get some rest. Amen. I remember when I was uh, working uh, at Exxon Mobil and I was on shift, doing shift work. And uh, we used to get off about 4.35 in the morning. Charles, you, you understand this. Uh, and, uh, and so it would seem as if I was up while I was driving home. But I was really sleeping behind the wheel. And then, then every now and then you catch yourself like, oh, Good thing nobody else was on the road, but you caught yourself and woke yourself up. Well, that was because God didn't design us to stay up 24 hours a day. He didn't design us that way. Amen. We, we are supposed to go to get some rest, go to sleep. Amen. You, you know, we teach our kids that little, that, little, that little prayer. Now I what? Lay me down to do what? Sleep. We told our kids it's time to sleep. Amen. But somehow we, we, we've gotten past that and we decided that we want to stay up all night long. And watch this now. We have so many gadgets that keep us up all night long. And even you need to check your kids because while you told them to go to bed, they're still on their phones. Amen. But we got to get some rest. Somebody say get some rest. Amen. Amen. See, if we don't, if we don't take heed to these things... We will forfeit the right 
to be healed that was bought by Jesus on Calvary. When Jesus went to the cross and died for us, he did more than just die for our salvation. He also died for our healing. Amen. That's why he can declare it is finished. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, go to Exodus 15. Exodus 15. I'm going to take a couple more minutes and then, uh, and then we're going to just come back next week and we'll talk some more about it. Amen. Exodus 15. Because unless I get the word of God, I can never have faith for anything. Amen. If I don't hear the word of God on it, faith coming by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. If I don't have the word, I cannot have faith for it. And so, so God has, has shared with me that I need to give you the word. So that when the devil attacks your body, you can go to the word, it is written. It is written. It is written. That's where I was 30 years ago with my mom. I didn't know it was written. I didn't. I didn't know. I really, I, I'm being honest. I didn't know. I didn't know that, 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 that all of the scriptures that I'm about to show you in this series were there. I didn't know. And so here I am preaching the word of God, but didn't know. Didn't have knowledge. I didn't know. You know? Now, now, I told y'all my grandfather was a preacher. So now, he didn't know. He didn't know. Now, it's been in the word all this time. But he didn't know. Because of tradition. Amen? And, 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 and Hosea said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And it's not that knowledge does not exist. It's that we, we, we just don't know it. Yeah. Exodus 15. Look at verse number 26. Look what he says. And said, if thou would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that what? That healeth thee. In other words, God says, I am the one that heals you. Now, now we, listen to me now, we thank God for doctors. Amen. We thank God for medical science. Praise God for all of it. But it's not them that heal us. To be quite honest with you, many of them are practicing on us. <laughs> Amen. They, they say, well, we're going to try this. And we're going to see how your body reacts to that. And if it has a negative reaction, we'll try something else. Amen. But God has declared, I am the Lord that healeth you. Amen. Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Watch this now. Exodus 23. Look at verse number 25. Exodus 23. Verse number 25. You ready? Look what he says. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. I will take sickness away from thee, from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy, de thy days I will fulfill. Now, in this particular passage, this is one of the, the scriptures that we use, Sister Porter, uh, over, I think Destiny is, what, 22 years old now? Pastor David Adams and, and Sister Kim Adams in Houston, Texas. No, she, yeah, she might, yeah. Well, she's the same age as Matthew. Yeah, she's about 21, 22. Well, well however old she is, uh, uh, Pastor David Adams came to us. We, I was preaching in Houston. Oh, yeah, she got to be older than that. Yeah. Uh, I was preaching in Houston every year. I would go back to the New Evergreen Baptist Church and, and preach. Uh, it was my mother's church while she was in Houston. And so the pastor, Pastor Jackson, would ask me to come and, and let me use my, uh, sharpen my tools. And so I would go back every year. And so uh, this particular year, I was talking about faith. And uh, Pastor David Adams, which is his son-in-law, came running out of the church after the service was over and said, Hey, hold, hold up a second. I ain't never heard faith like that before. I ain't never heard faith like that before. And here's our dilemma. The doctors have said that we can never have a child. And I said, well, the word of God says something different. 
Amen. And there's enough power in whatever God says to make whatever God says come to pass. And so we begin to give them the scripture, this particular passage of scripture. He says that, that, that Sister Kim should not go barren. And so we said, we're going to stand in agreement with you. And I, I gave him many other scriptures. And I said, we're going to stand in agreement with you for your, for your healing and that you will be able to, to conceive a child. So since I was going back every year, every year I go back. So by the time we got back there the next year, they had a baby girl named Destiny. And uh, they said, Pastor Sharp, this is because you stood in agreement. You and Lady Gwen stood in agreement with us for, for healing, for her body. When the doctor said that, that we couldn't, God said that he could. Because he said, I am the Lord that healeth you and that you should not go barren. We just use the word of God. Amen. Either the word of God is going to work for us or it's not going to work. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 103. Last scripture for tonight. Psalms 103. Look at verse number one. Psalms 103. Let's begin at verse number one. Hallelujah. Look what he says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So that means that there's something in it for me. Amen. And if God didn't want it for me, he wouldn't have put it in here for me. Amen. And he tells me, don't forget it. So what are the benefits, God? Who forgiveth all thine iniquity? So when I mess up, God says, I'll forgive you. But look at the next thing that God says he'll do for me. He will, who healeth all thy diseases. So every sickness, every disease, God says, I'll heal it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll heal it. And so, 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 so we just need to take advantage of the benefits that God has made for us, the provisions that he's made for us in his word. Amen. Now, on, on the upcoming weeks, I'll be giving you more scripture so that you can have a word from the Lord so that when the devil tries to lie to you and tell you that healing is not possible for you and it's not yours, then you need to go to the word of God and say, nope, this is what God says. And there's enough power in that word to make whatever God says come to pass in our lives. And then after, after I finished this teaching the series, the Spirit of God told me to lay hands on the sick. Amen. Now, the power of God is available for us. God just needs willing vessels. Amen. And I believe that at the, at the moment that God says to do it, that the anointing will fall into place. And that healing power will flow to whoever has faith for it. Amen. So the question is asked, well, did your mom have faith? She did. She had faith. She had faith. Faith for salvation. She had faith for this and faith for that. Now, I don't know if she had faith for, for her healing because we didn't talk about it. Because I didn't know. I, 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 I go back and I, I look at that situation, man. And while she was laying there, I mean, I was laughing and joking with her, left the hospital. They called me right back. Now, now, now watch this now. She was good. Left the hospital. You need to come back. I'm like, what, what is going on? Came back. She was gone. And I'm, I'm like, God, why? 48 years old. Why? In the prime of her life. Why? There are some things that we never going to get the answer for. Amen. But I made a vow to God that God, I'm going to teach your people. Now, in that situation, I had to receive my own healing from the emotional pain that I was feeling. Because here I am, I'm the baby child. I'm the baby. And I mean, mama spoiled me. I got everything I wanted. And she made sure that my sisters and brothers made sure I had it. <laughs> and, and I mean, after Lady Gwen, she's, a, she's the next love of my life. And I'm crying out to God, God help me. 
help my broken heart. And I was like, God, I need you. And he said, Colin, I got healing for that. I do. I got healing for that. I got peace for that. Yeah, I got peace for that. I provided it for you. Hmm. Now, what I want you to do is teach my people. <laughs> teach my people to have faith for their healing. Whatever the healing need, it is, whether it's a physical ailment, whether it's an emotional ailment, God says, teach my people. Teach my people, then I want you to operate in the gifts because it's available to you. Because that's one of the ways that I, I get healing into the body. Amen. Into the mind through the gifts of healing. Some may ask, well, that's not for us today. Who said it wasn't for us today? When I look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it, it, is it for us or is it not? Then we have to ask the question, well, is God the same yesterday, today, and forever? Didn't God say that I change not? I don't change. So if it was available for them, it's available for us. Amen. And so we just have to receive it. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for allowing me to come and share this message tonight to provide the word of God that will strengthen our faith for our healing. Now, what, whether it's for a physical healing for our bodies or an emotional healing, God, it's available to us. You have made provisions in your word, God, that, that we could be healed as our covenant right with you. So whether they are here in this auditorium or watching by way of all the technology, God, I, I declare that they heal now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you have declared yourself to be the healer. And Father, we think that there is none like you in all the earth. And God, because you have declared it yourself, God, we know that you cannot lie. And that you only tell us the truth. So, Father, in the days to come, as we hear this word, God, we accept it in our spirit and prepare our hearts to receive the healing that you promised us. So, God, we thank you now. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, and that we declare it to be done in Jesus' name. Now, strengthen our faith, Father. So, just as you told Peter, I pray for you, that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brothers. And, Father, that's our desire now, that as you heal us, God, that we're able to share with others about your healing power. So we thank you, Father. And then we do those things, God, that will help us to live a long life. Father, if it means that we will change our eating habits, God, we do that now in the name of Jesus. God, if it means that we will get more rest for our bodies, God, we, we declare it and we get more rest. Father, if it means that we exercise more, Father, we get some exercise. And so, Father, it is in the, in the name of Jesus that we stand on your word. We stand on your promise, God. And we declare ourselves to be healed in every aspect of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God, amen. Amen. Well, listen, those of you who are watching my web live stream, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for being a part of our service. Come back on the uh, upcoming weeks that so that you can get the word of God for your healing. Amen. So you can build your faith 
because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, if you want a copy of tonight's lesson, just simply email me. Let me know your request, and we will rush a copy right to you. Now, remember this. We're building faith. We're building bridges, and we're building lives. And Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. We'll see you next time on our broadcast. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Do you want to be saved? Hallelujah. Well, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says Lord that if you God, confess with your saved. mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, Hallelujah. you shall be saved. Pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. I come now confessing and believing that you raised Jesus from the dead. I repent of my sins and I ask you to come into my heart. I make you the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you pray that simple prayer, Welcome to the family of God. We believe you got born again. Keep God first in your life and get into a good Bible teaching church that will help you grow in the things of God. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. And again, I'd like to say thank you for tuning in. I would like to also extend to you a personal invitation to join us right here at Faith Christian Center Church, 6490 Feeling Boulevard here in Beaumont, Texas. I know that if you enjoyed it by watching it live today, that you're going to enjoy it by being in service. We love to have you here in our services. Be my special guest. Now remember, as always, we're building faith, we're building bridges, and we're building lives. And Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now, Father, as always, as we leave this place, we never ever leave your place. Traveling grace is ours as we go. In Jesus' name. And all of you that press it. Amen. Tell somebody you love Jesus. Lord and God.